Welcome, baseball fans, to week seven of Major League Baseball Power Rankings. We had an exciting first quarter, and this begins the first week of this second quarter of baseball. So, uh, we've had uh, some interesting moves. A nice thing about the second quarter of baseball is that a lot of things start to settle in until you get to the All-Star Games. And this we had a lot of parity this week. We had 10 teams move up, 10 teams move down, and 10 teams stay completely flat. The best and worked best team this week has won 6-0, completely undefeated. And if you're a fan of that team, you know who exactly who I'm talking about. The worst team was one of six this week, although there were some challengers. But we started off with the number 30, the Miami Marlins, whom, believe it or not, they actually, for Miami standards, had a good week. This is the first week that they've had a, an even record since the first few games of the season when they split the season opener with Colorado 2-2. Two and two. So the fact that they went 2-2 two and two this week as well uh, shows that they had the advantage of not having played very many games for sure. But they also, for the first time all season, did not have, since the very beginning, did not have a losing record in a given week. So, good job Miami. Y'all still got a long way to go, but they've now catapulted from 10 to 12 wins on the season after going 2-2 two two against the Tampa Bay Rays and the New York Mets. Yay! Good job! Coming in at number 29, also in the same spot as last week, the Baltimore Orioles. Also a team that's rebounding, but they went 2-4 and four against the New York Yankees and the Cleveland Indians. At 15-30, and 30, they are at the cellar of the AL East. And how many ways can you talk about how they're, they're pitching their players, their injuries, their coaching... Everything needs to work. <laughs> I, I, and Baltimore fans love you to death, but sorry. It's not like you're riding high on high expectations this season. When they went off fire sale last year, they're, you're like, yeah, I still love them, but they're going to suck this year. <laughs> it is what it is. Coming in at number 28, the Detroit Tigers also, same spot. There are 10 teams that are in the same spot this week. So the first few doesn't really surprise anybody that they're in the same spot. The Detroit Tigers, however, get the Golden Sombrero for the worst record of the week. Going 1-6, playing all 7 games of the week. And only winning 1, be, albeit against your Houston Astros and your... Oakland Athletics so they had a terrible week and yet cumulatively despite that they weren't on the season worse than Baltimore or Miami and they're also 18 26 which shows they've also got more wins than the other two teams because they've had a better season to date than them having said that you know it's not possible to suck so badly you fall below those two although they are not making it easy. <laughs> Coming in at 27 is the Kansas City Chiefs. Or, no, Kansas City Royals, pardon me, pardon me. I'm thinking about something else. Um, the Kansas City Royals, you have to think about football. Um, the Kansas City Royals also, same spots last week, being 15-31, had a dismal week, going 1-5. Not as bad as the Detroit Tigers, but 1-5 is still... In competition for the worst week of any team, having gone through the Texas Rangers and the LA Angels of Anaheim, they basically but got obliterated. And as you can tell from the run differential, they got scored 27 times more than they scored a run. And you're looking at the first four teams here, none of them have reached 50 points on the season yet. You get three points for a win, two for that overtime win, one for an overtime loss. And despite all those ways to get points, they still haven't cracked 50. And we're now in the second quarter of the season. I, <laughs> sorry, fans. They're just showing you how much they're struggling. Coming in at number 26, 
uh, a Toronto Blue Jays. Despite the fact that Valentin Guerrero's son is showing signs of life for the team, the team as a whole has not been doing particularly well. Although uh, this week they went two and four, two wins, four losses, for San Francisco Giants and Chicago White Sox, two teams that are not stellar in the first place, and they just did uh, got got beat. Four out of six games they lost, they dropped. That causes them to drop one from last week. And I mean, hopefully Vladimir Guerrero's son Jr. Junior can help out, but they need a lot more than one player. They they need a lot of chemistry, and right now Baltimore is the only thing keeping them out of the cellar at the AL East. Coming in at 25 are the San Francisco Giants. And they're up one. So they basically Flipped each other over. The Giants rose because they took two out of three, and Toronto fell because they lost two out of three. The Giants, having gone three wins and two losses against the Toronto Blue Jays and the Arizona Diamondbacks, are up one and are sitting at a record at this point in time of 19 and 25. So we still haven't seen a team uh, yet that has broken 20 wins. There are plenty of them, but not yet. So. Uh, coming in at 24 are the Washington Nationals, who are in the same spot as last week, having had a very average week. Winning three, losing three against the New York Mets and the Chicago Cubs, and they are sitting at 19 26 on the season. So they're on the cusp of breaking 20 wins, but they're still sitting at seven games under 500. Coming in at 23, the New York Mets. New York having dropped four from last week is your first 20 win team on the board and they have gone one win and four losses this week against the Washington Nationals and the Miami Marlins. So you're talking about a team that has played the Miami Marlins this week and still lost games. When you're losing against the worst team in the league, you get the... Uh, the you suck sauce, basically. Uh, the Mets have a much stronger team, and they have been performing to see to a year. Part of that's due to the ILs, part of that's due to errors, part of that's due to a, a, a combination of things. But they drop four this week, and they're down 23. They get to hit the cellar row. Coming in at 22, the Colorado Rockies. Now, I honestly was a little bit fooled by the Rockies because when they started the season off splitting against Miami, I thought, okay, I saw some of these games here. They have potential. I think they might be able to do something. I'll grant it in their division, they might not do they might not make the playoffs, but I'm also not expecting them to fall into the cellar. What do we have here? A team that has yet to crack sixty points on the season. They have just a single run more than they've given uh, than they've given up this week, and they are down one from last week, sitting at twenty wins, twenty four losses, four games under five hundred, having gone two wins, three losses against the Boston Red Sox and the Philadelphia Phillies. Granted, you can say, okay, against powerhouse teams, you're you can give them a slide. I get that, but here's the thing: if you want to compete for the division this when you're pay, playing quote unquote on paper superior teams that's your opportunity to shine to show you can do it you can rise to the occasions you can play them hard and they just they went two and three I mean I, I don't find that particularly impressive and they dropped one of his all of it coming in at number 21 to finish off the bottom row the Seattle Mariners Seattle is down three from last week. They just keep on sliding and sliding and sliding and sliding. You know it would be hysterical, and I mean this with all the love in the world to Mariners fans, but they started the first week up at number one. Even to the first week or two, they were at number one. And they actually managed to slide all the way to 30, that would be funny. Not funny as a ha-ha, but funny from like, Wow, watch the slide of the Titan, you know. <laughs> it's just so sad. 
Uh, they are sitting at four games under on the season, having won two and lost four against the Oakland Athletics and the Minnesota Twins. Now, uh, the Athletics, if you recall, are divisional opponents, and they started the season off in Tokyo against the the Oakland Athletics and both teams made the top 10 because they got to start the season earlier than everybody else playing in Tokyo. Unfortunately, they have slid below the Athletics at this point and now are sitting. They got slaughtered this week. They got 32 runs scored against them more than they got they scored. They just got demolished, dude. I mean, it's just you look at them and you're just shaking your head, man. I'm so sorry. Uh, coming in at number 20, the Chicago White Sox. Chicago is up three from this week, so they rise out of the cellar row and get to claim a spot in the middle row. They are sitting at still two under 500 at 21-23, but they had a solid week against division rivals, the Cleveland Indians, and AL rival, the Toronto Blue Jays. They took the two out of three, and that's exactly what you gotta do. But here's the thing, you gotta do it more than just one week. You have to be very consistent with it. That's the killer thing about being good in this league. Consistency, consistency, consistency. So they had a good week, and that allowed them to climb out of the saddle row, come into number 20 there. Uh, but they have some more to do, and go for it. Socks, you can do it. Coming in at number 19. The Texas Rangers are up one from this week. Of all teams sitting under 500 for the record, I am not surprised to see anything under 15 being at a sub-500 record. It's early enough in the season that being a game or two under 500 is expected of teams in the middle row here because it's so early a season they haven't had a chance to establish anything and they're still trying to make up from a bad start having said that the texas rangers went three and three this week against the kansas city royals and the st louis cardinals so they had an extremely average week up a winning three losing three batting 500 so they were also 300 last week as well but the, that, that still enables them to rise one from last week. The, that number 18, the Pittsburgh Pirates are up four from last week. They had a, a above average week playing all seven games, winning four, losing three to the Arizona Diamondbacks and the San Diego Padres. Having that West Coast trip enabled them to uh, play slightly above average, but because of the rest of the teams around them, they managed to climb four from last week. So last week they were down here, and they climbed into the middle row there, based upon having an average, slightly above average week. The Pittsburgh Pirates are sitting at 23-20, and 20, so they are the first team on the board to have a winning record so far this season. Congratulations, Pirates. There are some players on your team that I am keeping my eye on to see how well they do. They have some stiff competition in their, in their division um, between the Cubs, the Cardinals, the, well, yeah, the Cardinals and um, the Cubs. But uh, I like their potential. I do. But potential only as good as well as you execute. So we'll see how they, they come along. Coming in at number 17 are the LA Angels of Anaheim. The Angels are down one and they are 22 and 23, one under 500 for the for the season and this week they went very very average. Winning three, losing three against the Minnesota Twins and the Kansas City Royals. Playing teams in the Central Division you would think would serve their favor because the Central Division is historically not a particularly strong division, hence Cleveland keeps winning the division, despite having not the best record. They usually come in at like a third division winner there because they get to take advantage of beating up on bad teams and skating in just because they win. they're the best team in a bad division. And despite that, the LA Angels, I guess, are using this to maybe catapult their season. Who knows? But they're down one this week. So... They are treading water, and we'll see if they can come around. Granted, they're also without Mike Socia. I mean, 
If that's a guy has a manager I admired. He could take a, a team of average players and get more out of them. And now he's no longer with the LA, and their the new manager needs to find his footing and the team identity under new leadership. So we'll see what happens. Coming in at number sixteen, the Boston Red Sox down three this week, having gone two wins, three losses against the Colorado Rockies and the Houston Astros. Now losing to Houston, I mean that's like during the hockey season, everyone lost to the Tampa Bay Lightning. I mean, it's it's almost expected anymore to see uh, you go in against an elite team and lose games. However, the Boston Red Sox are their own powerhouse in a matter of sorts. Between Porcello, Sale, and everybody else in that club, they have significantly strong weapons, and they are the defending champions. So you would think that they would perform better than just 2-3 and three against Colorado and Houston. But that leaves them... At one over five hundred, at twenty three and twenty, and they are down three this week from last week. Um, not that I'm necessarily interested in seeing them rise or climb per se, but the reality of the matter is, is that they have more depth than they are showing. So, is it a potential lag over the uh, postseason success? Maybe, but I mean by. May, shouldn't you start getting into gear and getting into shape and start warming up and heating up? I mean, you had some a good week the other week that allowed you to rise out of the cellar here. And you're, what are you doing with it? What are you doing with it? Coming in at number 15, the, Colo- the Cincinnati Reds, who are in the same spot as they were last week. They are four games under 500. And they had a very, very average week, going three wins, three losses against the Chicago Cubs and the LA Dodgers. Now, uh, granted, you're going against your division rival, Chicago, who's doing well this season, and you're going against the rain, the reigning as of last week number one spot, LA Dodgers, who are just tearing it up. The Dodgers have one of the best records in baseball at 30 and 17. So the fact that you were able to more or less hold your own against, on paper, superior teams and based upon performance on the field as well, teams that are having better seasons in Cincinnati. I've seen Cincinnati win some, lose some. I saw their games against Chicago and finally Hendricks just outright dominated Cincinnati. So the fact they went 3-3 this week... um, Shows they're just very much an average team, winning some, losing some. Um, I think they, uh, as much as I would like to see them be more competitive, this is where they're showing that they are at. Very much middle of the pack of the league. Coming in at number 14, the Oakland Athletics. Oakland is up three this week, having gone three wins, three losses, a 500 week against the Seattle Mariners and Detroit Tigers. Seattle and Detroit, you would think three and three. Come on now, you, you especially when you have pitchers who are showing, putting up no hit bids during the week. You can't do better than three and three. Uh, not to knock the Athletics, but you, you, I expect more from you. I do. You're three hundred five hundred. You rose three this week based upon your performance, but three. Out of th- three and three on a six game out of seven g- game week is just. I expect more out of you. I do. You know, you've got the front office players, the front uh, back office personnel, you've got the on field talent. You can do better. I want to see it. Alright, um, this one dropped here. Uh, coming in at number 13, My How the Mighty Have Fallen. The San Diego Padres have had an abysmal week, going one win and five losses against the Los Angeles Dodgers and the Pittsburgh Pirates. They're now at a flat 500 record of 23 and 23, and that has caused them to drop five. Talking about a team with whom I thought had the pieces to be division contenders, and they were up here for a while in the first quarter, and they have just they got 70 points, but they got outscored 14 runs this week. 14. 
And I hear different comparisons between Machado and other players with whom, hey, Machado costs us $70 million or whatever it is, and this other player, a fraction of that, and they both had average, similar performances this week. Well, for, fundamentally, that's not really fair. Because here's the thing. Players are human, and they're going to have good weeks and bad weeks. Fundamentally, you're, they paid for, they brought in players like Hosmer and and Machado and others based upon what they did with former teams and what they can do. Not that they, what they will do, but what they can do. You want the players with whom have shown that they can do something because the ceiling is higher, the potential is up there versus taking on somebody with whom you don't expect anything. So if they, don't, they, if they suck, it is what it is. If they do great, it's, it's a bonus kind of thing. They brought in players with the expectation of competing for a division competing for a world championship and they looked promising in the first quarter haven't been so since coming in at number 12 the st louis cardinals now this is a team i find interesting because it's funny the one they get hot and cold because it's very unpredictable you would they could go in against chicago and think that you they could you know sweep the season or they could go in against um, let's say Cleveland, and you would think, oh, they're going to get killed, and then they end up winning. It's like, there's no rhyme or reason to how this team chooses to win or doesn't win. But having said that, they are 2 over 500. They are down 2 this week after having an abysmal week of going 2 wins and 4 losses against the Atlanta Braves and the Texas Rangers. Granted, Atlanta is showing better promise than they have in, in previous weeks. But they didn't have to have a good week going. They didn't have a dismal week, like a 1-5, and 1-6. But when you're dropping twice as many games as you're winning in a given week, it's not helping. <laughs> I, I just... Uh, trying to figure out St. Louis is just like... Um, you know, I could probably give you a microanalysis as to what's working, what isn't working, but this is trying to keep focus on the whole league here. So moving along, number 11 is the Arizona Diamondbacks. They're in the same spot as last week. They are four over 500, 25 and 21, and they also had a very, very average week, winning three, losing three against the Pittsburgh Pirates and the San Francisco Giants. Um, this is a team with whom a couple of few weeks ago were definitely in the top 10 and they ha had things starting to click and having a very, very average week, they uh, ended up standing in the same spot as last week at number 11. So we'll see how things go. With the players they have, they can definitely turn around and I definitely see them as contenders for the division. We'll see what happens. But now, let's get into the top 10 everyone loves top 10 and when you look at mlb and espn they always love focusing all their energy on the top 10 writing all these opinion based biases about the top 10. the top 10 here as you can see start at 74 and go all the way up to 92. so next week we could have our first 100 point team having said that let's get to it the top 10 coming in number 10 the Cleveland Indians. Cleveland, when it's five, four over 500 at 24 and 20, they're up two from last week, having a strong week, winning four, losing two against the Chicago White Sox and the Baltimore Orioles. Granted, Baltimore is not a great team this year, and the Chicago White Sox um, are not struggling as much as they were before, but they're also not. Uh, elite yet either, but they did what they had to do. They went in against those teams and they won their game. They took their res respective two out of three of a six game set, winning four and losing two. They had a good week and they have a long way to go, but they're doing what they're supposed to be doing with Terry Francona at the helm and Theo Epstein in the back office. You can't ask for much more than that. Doing that consistently throughout the season is what I expect out of the Indians. We'll see what happens. Number nine, the Atlanta Braves. Congratulations, Atlanta. You're up five from this week. And the San Diego Padres and the Atlanta Braves have the two biggest jumps of all the teams being up five and down five. So good job, Atlanta. You had a phenomenally strong week. 
not the absolute best because somebody else on this board went 6-0, but at 5-1, you definitely get kudos, you definitely get your acumen, you had a great week, you deserve to be at number 9, considering it's the, first, uh, the closest you've, you've gotten to the number 1 position on the board, hell of a week, great job. You went 5-1 against the St. Louis Cardinals and the Milwaukee Brewers, not exactly easy thing to do, both teams are pretty good, Milwaukee even more so. So. Great job, Atlanta. Keep up the good work. Let's see what you can do next week. Number eight, the Chicago Cubs. Up one from last week, and they are nine games over 500 at 26 and 17, having had an average week, winning three, losing three against the Cincinnati Reds and the Washington Nationals. Now, granted, I would think that if they're going to be a powerhouse, you're going up against Washington. And in Cincinnati, you should have dominated, you know, four, two, four, four to two, five to one, something like that. But you know what? They're, they're in the top ten. They are up one, which means they were still in the top ten last week. And they're doing what you got to do to win games. It wasn't a stellar week, but it also did, having an average week didn't hurt them because they climbed one. Number seven, the Philadelphia Phillies! Same spot as last week at 26 and 19, sitting at 7 games over 500, had an above average week, going winning 4, losing 3 against the Milwaukee Brewers and the Colorado Rockies. Going up against Milwaukee, you know, I can give them a sort of an understanding about that. Going up against the Colorado Rockies, you expect, you expect wins. You do. At the same time, Colorado is not going to lose every game either. Uh, they're just losing more than they win. But having said that, you're at the same spot. You're above 500 for the week. Uh, and you maintain for the third week in a row, I believe it is, the number seven spot. Speaking of the Milwaukee Brewers, number six. Also, same spot as last week. Unlike Philadelphia, they had a slightly below average week, winning three, losing four against the Philadelphia Phillies and the Atlanta Braves. However, Atlanta had a stellar week, and you're not going to make up on that against the Philadelphia Phillies. So, I'll give the Brewers a slide for that. They, had, they went up against the competition and did not get killed doing it. They set it six games over 527-21, so... Uh, I expect they're probably be dominating their division for the majority of the year. I don't know that any other team is going to take them out because they're playing very, very well. But they're playing well at the end of the season is more important than playing well at the beginning of the season. Granted, you get at the beginning of the season, you get the wins that are going to help you compete in September and October, but or more or less August, September. But winning games in September and in the heat of the pennant race is where people are really be watching you. So now we have the top five, the all important powerhouse elite teams in the league, your top five. Let's see who they are this week. Coming in at number five, after dropping the rubber match last Sunday to New York and then splitting the rematch in New York one to one, that puts them on the week, having dropped two by three to New York, and also against Miami, only winning two games against Miami. I mean, you would expect them to just basically beat the crap out of the Marlins, but and they did. They won two games. I'll give them the credit for that. But they had a, a subpar week because they did not fare well against their division rival, a team, by the way, in which they are actually in the middle of a. Uh, fight for the division. Um, they are like what a half game up or down one way or the other against New York. Uh, they and they between playing a set in Tampa and then playing a set in New York, they failed to take advantage and that put them at number five. Granted, the Rays are having a phenomenal season. That whole opener thing start with Tampa and only really works well in Tampa because of the way they built the team. 
other teams built, everyone else built their teams traditional five starters. They built the team knowing you only had Charlie Morton and Blake Snell. The rest of the rotation were going to be basically more or less long relievers out of the bullpen. But they made it work and they were successful with it. So they head off the top five at number five. And speaking of their division rival, the New York Yankees, they come in at number four. Having taken out two out of three from their division rival, Tampa, in Tampa, and then splitting in New York, they also proceed to sweep a doubleheader against the Baltimore Orioles, giving them an overall strong week of four wins and one loss. And they're sitting at 10 games under 500. So, great job, Yankees. And for all those haters out there, if you don't want to see them up there, then your team has to play on the put the put the show their game on the field here. This is a team that has been winning. And speaking of winning, the top three starts off with the Minnesota Twins, who are having a phenomenal week. They went five wins. Two losses against the Los Angeles Angels and the Seattle Mariners. They're sitting at 30 and 15. They absolutely deserve to be top of their division. They are in the same spot as last week, but they are showing on the field that they are division champions here. They are showing the acumen. They're showing they got the pitching, the hitting, the uh, the, the coaching, everything you need. Everything is clicking, clicking, clicking. I would watch out for Cleveland down the stretch, but right now, you deserve all the acumen in the world for being in first place. You're doing a hell of a job. Number two, the LA Dodgers have been dethroned for the first time in a month. The LA Dodgers finally could not ride an average week into staying at the top. Granted, they had a very good week, winning four, losing one against San Diego Padres and the Cincinnati Reds. They're sitting at 30 and 17, but they are down one because the, the team that has performed absolutely stellar in every aspect of the game, and it's no surprise to fans of this team, the Houston Astros sweep the whole week 6-0 and against the Detroit Tigers and the Boston Red Sox. Phenomenal week and I saw uh, from a fan in the videos about all the reasons why Houston belongs up top because they're hitting, they're pitching, and their areas, their runs, their batting average, their batting average, their defensive plays. They are having a phenomenal run. They swept the week. They're on a winning streak, and that brings them up three to dethrone the LA Dodgers. Congratulations, Houston. Way to go. You had a phenomenal week. Now that you've managed to make it to number one, Let's see how far you can ride this winning streak, and when it ends, can you start it again? Can you keep it going throughout the season here? Can you keep your crown, your golden crown? So, I wish you the best of luck. I really do. You lost some people in Keuchel and Morton during the offseason, but you're still showing you've got all the pieces, and they're clicking. Now, it's going to be more important to see them click in September, and even more so in October, but... They had a phenomenal week. Congratulations, Houston Astros. I would love to hear all your thoughts, comments, and opinions about the power rankings. Who should be up higher? Who should be down lower? Who was right? Who was, who, um, can you make an argument for where somebody should be, either upper or lower? I would love to hear all about it in the comment section below. And if you just happen to be browsing through the web, and come happen upon this video, please feel free to hit the like and subscribe button. It helps out the channel, and I would love to bring more content to everyone. So I encourage everyone to subscribe and tune in each week. And until next week, enjoy the games. Have a wonderful weekend. Enjoy the upcoming games. And thank you for watching. I very much appreciate your patronage, viewing, and enjoyment of this content. I love doing it and I love sharing it with all of you. Thank you for watching. Have a wonderful Sunday.